Okay, first question is, um, why is exercise important to you? Okay, great question. So I think exercise for me is really important because obviously, as you know, having cystic fibrosis, we have to look after our bodies. We have to look after ourselves from yeah. a genuine health perspective. So from my perspective, you know, exercise for me is something I enjoy. I have to admit, I do enjoy exercising. But more than that, I think it's just really important to understand for me that if I exercise every day, it's going to give me a better chance of living a really healthy lifestyle and actually allowing me to do the things that I want to do. So, you know, there's lots of things outside sport and exercise that I love doing. Um, and I know that if I'm in the best physical condition, I know that I'm going to enjoy those things to the, like the maximum ability that I can, if that makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. So for me personally, exercise is just not only important to keep fit and healthy in general, but also to allow me to enjoy the other things in life that, you know, I can go and do with ease if I'm a little bit fitter. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, second question is, um, how do you stay motivated? Okay, so that's a question I get asked quite a lot, actually. Um, and I think for me, motivation is a really funny thing um, because, you know, no one, even me, no one is motivated 100% of the time. You know, I have times where I'm just like, I literally can't be bothered today and I don't want to get out of bed and I just, you know, I just want to have a, a chill day and relax and play on my PlayStation all day. Um, so that happens to me as well. But I think what's important to understand with motivation is that if you have certain set goals that you've broken down, so not just like I want to achieve this in 12 months, but also broken that goal down into, OK, what do I need to achieve today or what do I need to achieve this week to get me closer to that goal? that can act as a motivator to, to really push you to get out of bed that day and, and actually do something. Um, so I think your question, you know, what motivates me, it's definitely having a good goal set, but also having the ability to remind myself of that goal on a daily basis, because, you know, like a lot of people it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's January, right? A lot of people will say, I've got a new year's resolution that I want to do X and that's great to have a goal like that however what happens with new year's resolutions because it's like you know as you know like everyone starts a goal like on a monday or everyone starts a goal in january because they think it's the thing yeah. to do but the difficulty with that is that it's quite short term and a lot of people say right okay i'm gonna have a 12 month goal but they don't really think about okay well what's the goal this week um to yeah. give them action points to actually go and do right now um, yeah. And a lot of people set goals where there it's a huge goal. Um, and right now, some of my goals for the next 12 months are unachievable to me right now in this very moment in time. But I know that if I do the, the right things every week, week in, week out, that goal becomes very achievable for me if yeah. I do those right things. So I think it's about being able to motivate yourself, not just you know, in, in six weeks time when you've got a challenge or in a year's time when you've got a, a deadline for, for a goal, it's about being able to motivate yourself now and constantly remind yourself of, of what you want to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Third question is about your challenges. Uh, what are you doing at the minute? And okay. What have you done? So, what have you done? And what have I done? Okay, so to keep it precise and short on what I have done, um, the first proper challenge I did as an ultra athlete, um, I did the World's Fittest Man Challenge where I exercised nonstop for 24 hours. And within those 24 hours, I had to cycle 100 miles, uh, lift 100 tons, run 10 mile, row 10 mile, cross train 10 mile, and then swim two miles. And then I had to do 3,000 sit-ups, 1,000 press-ups, and 1,000 squats. Um, and I was only allowed, yeah, it was a lot. And I was only allowed three two-minute breaks in the whole 24-hour period. Um, so it was, it was really intense. Um, I, f I completed the World's Fittest Man Challenge, so I was fifth in the world to complete it. Um, and I did it in 22 hours and 10 minutes. 
and my trainer turned around to me and said, oh, um, you've promised everyone that it's called 24 hours for CF. So you've got an hour and 50 minutes left. What are you going to do? So I had to jump on the rowing machine and row another 10 miles to make it 20 in total. So, um, so yeah, I wasn't pleased with him that day. But, um, but yes, yeah, so, and that was, I think that challenge, if I remember rightly, uh, within a 24 hour period, I lost 16 pound in weight. So over a stone in weight um, from doing that challenge, which was a real shock to the system uh, to the point where I went to bed that night and I woke up after six or seven hours and I went to have breakfast. And as I'm in the cafe, I go to the toilet uh, before my breakfast comes to the table and I actually fainted. I collapsed on the floor um, because yeah. I was so low on energy and my body had just totally sort of shut down on me because I pushed it to the extreme really. So that was my first challenge. Then I went on uh, the following year because I wanted to not be fifth in the world. I wanted to be number one in the world at something. Um, I went on to lift and um, break a world record to lift 1 million kilos in 24 hours. Um, and I did that by lifting 755 kilos every minute on the minute for 22 hours and 11 minutes. Um, yeah. So that was like brutal beyond belief it was it hurt me so much you wouldn't even believe um but i got the world record in 10 hours and i completed the million kilos in in 22 hours so that was good and then the following year which was unbelievably 2019 was my last challenge in october um i swam 21 miles down in dover and then cycled uh just short of 200 miles to london and then ran 160 miles from London to Cardiff um, to finish in five days. But as I was talking earlier to you, that run was more of a run, walk, walk, run, walk, 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 yeah. run. It was, there was a lot of walking involved in that 160 miles. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I think if you were to ask me what was my toughest challenge out of those three, I would say the million kilos was physically um, absolutely exhausting. Um, I did that with a broken hand as well. So that was like really, really tough for my body. Um, but I think mentally the five day challenge, the swim, bike, run was, was mentally exhausting because, you know, with 24 hours, you've got 24 hours and then you know that the challenge is over. But yeah. then with the swim bike run, I knew that I'd finished the swim, 21 miles, and then I instantly had to jump on a bike to cycle to London in horrendous weather and thought, it's almost like it's never going to end and I couldn't yeah. see the end point. So that was really tough mentally. Um, yeah. But yeah, so those are the three challenges, the main challenges I've done as a, as a professional athlete. Um, and the challenges I've got coming up, I've, to be honest with you, the, the road to 100, which I haven't announced yet, is going to be probably physically and mentally the toughest thing I've ever done. Um, right. So when I announce that, you'll be the first to know um, because I'm still working on the logistics of that, but I'm hoping that that's going to be around July time this year. Um, right. It just depends on what the world looks like and hopefully we come out of this lockdown and I can go back to the gym and, and do some proper yeah. training again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right, so what would you tell them what you're going to do? Um, is, uh, my goal for this year yeah. is to lose £100. And wow. Yeah, means my question to you would be on that is how much exercise would I have to do a day to try and lose that? Okay, so great question. It's really complex, but I'll, keep it, I'll try and keep it as simple as possible just because obviously weight loss is and the way i would look at it for you as well because to lose a hundred pound that is an that is an incredible amount of weight to lose in 12 months and hats off to you that is awesome what i would look at doing as well is this sounds really sort of um how can i say like a bit strange at first but what i would do is genuine just for yourself you don't have to show anyone else just for yourself in yeah. your own head is take a photo of yourself in the mirror yeah with your top off you know and just look at how you look now okay because there's obviously a reason yeah. you want to lose 100 pound right so yeah. look at what you look like now okay and then look at what you look like after 
three, four weeks and then six, eight weeks and do it that way. Don't jump on the scales every day. Um, you know, I do that now because I'm trying to put on a lot of weight and it's demoralizing when I haven't hit a goal and things like that. It's very, it's not good to do that. But also if you're exercising and I would probably recommend exercising at least for 20 minutes to half hour a day, right. um, along with your walks as well. So doing like a, maybe a 10 to 15 minute circuit high in, I've seen some of your circuit training you're doing do do 10 to 15 yeah. minutes of that in the morning and 10 to 15 minutes in the evening as well before bed yeah. um, and then you know maybe around midday lunchtime go for a little walk even if it's just you know a few kilometers or, or what have you that's gonna that in that exercise intensity is definitely going to help you lose the weight but it also comes down to your diet and what you're putting in yeah so one of the things that I say to a lot of people that I train and, and work with is you you don't you can't un, you can't train a bad diet so for example you can do all the exercise in the world but if your diet is really bad and you're eating four or five thousand calories of really bad food every day you're not really going to lose the weight so you need yeah. to look at what you're eating um yeah. but also i think you know with that goal in mind like i said earlier you've got a goal to lose a hundred pound in a year which is amazing I would break that yep. down into how many pounds a month that you need to, to lose. So let's say it's just under 10 pounds, just to round it, round it down a little, uh, round yep. it up a little bit. So it's, it's 10 pound a month you need to lose. So what's that? Yep. That's two and a half ish pound a week. Yep. Um, and that would be my goal to you now. So we're now on what Thursday is it? Yeah. Thursday. Thursday. I would say give yourself till next Thursday to lose two and a half pounds. Yeah, and do it that way. So if you're jumping on the scales once a week, that's great, yeah. um, and monitor it that way. But definitely, definitely look at what you're eating. I know you you're a big fan of pizza. I've seen, yeah, <laughs> lots of things: pizzas, <laughs> burgers. Yeah. That's... So and and that's fine because you know at the end of the day I eat a lot of crap as well. But I think because I train a lot, even though I am putting fat on right now. Um, yeah. I'm not, if, if I didn't train, I'd probably get up to my target weight of 15 and a half stone easily, yeah. but I'd put on a lot of fat, which is obviously not healthy. Yeah. So I think it's fine to, to eat certain things in moderation, but just make sure you're hydrating a lot. Like water is absolutely essential to, to weight yeah. loss. It, it sounds counterintuitive, but hydration is absolutely key. So keep on top of your water intake yeah. um, and eat good stuff as well as the bad stuff as well. So, yeah. um, but yeah, mate, it sounds like an awesome goal. And listen, I will reach out and say, I am more than happy to help you with that goal. Um, yeah. just bear in mind that what that means is that you're accountable to me. And maybe yeah. if you're up for it, when you do your weekly check-ins and stuff, and you can text me and say, right, I've lost this much weight this week or what have you. And I'll help you with that. I've got no problem doing yeah. that mate, at all. Okay, cool. Um, and then another question would be, how many calories a day do you reckon I should be eating? So how tall are you? Six, three and a bit. Six, three and a bit. So let's say, do what I do, mate. Always round up with your height. I'm yeah, all right. Let's <laughs> say six, four. I'll tell you the six, four. So let's take it to six, four. Because I'm, I'm five... Five nine and a half. I'm always rounded up to five ten. Don't worry about yeah, that. Six, so four. six four. And what do you weigh at the moment? Twenty one seven. Twenty one seven. Always round down when you're talking about weight, though. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Twenty one stone seven. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, I don't know. In terms of you, obviously, you speak to your dietitian in the hospital and stuff like that as well. And yeah. they've obviously worked out, you know, how many calories you need each day. Um, for the average male, I think it's about two and a bit thousand um, calories each day. Um, for the average male, I've got to be honest, mate. At six foot four, you're not average. Um, I'm I'm very average. <laughs> you're not. Um, but I think what is great about that is that. In fairness, if you're losing, because what is the reason that you're wanting to lose weight? Um, to look good and be able to okay. keep doing all of my sports at a good sort okay. of pace and standard good. and try not to get too tired. Okay, good. So I'm like, if we focus on um, how you feel 
as opposed to what you look like on the scales long term obviously short term we need to set some targets like two and a half pound a week we need to lose like from week one let's aim for that and and every day so with that in mind i would uh, what's your current sort of calorie intake do you know how many calories you have in each day at the moment about four thousand about four thousand so if we strip that back initially and and what i would say is don't make huge jumps straight away because it's not sustainable it will be yeah. too much of a shock to your body um physically and mentally so what i would suggest is say you're on for let's say four and a half thousand to be you know at the top end of that that diet um every yeah. day if we scale that back in week one to just i don't know let's say three thousand seven hundred for example yeah. um in week one and then week two three and a half thousand so basically you're just knocking off a couple yeah. of hundred calories every day until you get to i would say roughly two and a half um yeah. two and a half thousand because what you want to do is obviously be at a calorie deficit so yeah. essentially have you got anything that you can track how many calories you're burning through exercise each day have you got a watch yeah. that does yeah, that I've okay got, i've got an apple watch okay perfect so that will tell you every day how many calories you're burning so in essence there's the answer to your question you want to be eating less than the calories that you're actually burning yeah so if it comes to nine o'clock at night and you've burnt I don't know, let's say three and a half thousand calories, okay? And yep. you've eaten three and a half thousand, but you want another pizza. Don't have the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that would that's a really good gauge for you to be able to monitor yourself. Yep. Um and obviously the, the goal really is yes, to look good, awesome. And to, to, but the main one is to feel good and feel fit so you can do the activities yeah. at a good pace. So my argument with that is with your training and your program, um, I would definitely include some like really high intensity, get your heart rate quite high and, and yeah. so you can burn those calories, but also increase your cardiovascular endurance. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if your brother said, but I sent Morgan a bit of a training plan yeah. um, to follow. Um, and that is like, you know, essentially it's a two week plan to start off with, to see how he gets on. If you want, I would, if I were you follow what he's doing um, because it's a yeah. great cardio plan and it's, it's good for building good muscle. Yeah. What I would say with the weight loss as well is just to bear in mind that obviously when you're doing the body weight exercises like your press ups, your squats, your lunges, your, you know, and yeah. even your sit ups to a, to a degree, what you're doing is you're building muscle yeah. and muscle weighs something. Obviously, it's, it's not air, it doesn't weigh nothing. So, whilst you've got a goal of losing weight, what I would also yeah. think about is let's say one week you know, you, you don't lose the two and a half pound. However, what you do find is that you feel fitter, you feel stronger and you feel better about yourself. And you look in the yeah. mirror and think, actually, I look better than I did last week. Yeah. Don't worry too much. Don't let it get into your head too much that you haven't lost that two and a half pound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mate, listen, I will, I'll help you. No, no problem at all. And I think if, cool. if I can, if I talk to you all the time about it and, you know, and you kind of open up and say, right, I'm, you know, because some days you're going to feel like crap. You are. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, you're adjusting your lifestyle now to eating less than you were before. So yeah. you're not going to feel great to begin with. But after two yeah. or three weeks, you'll start to see the, you know, that's why people do crash diets. They don't work because people will crash diet. And then all of a sudden, after three weeks, they think this isn't getting any easier. I'm going to give up. But little do yeah. they know in week four, five, six, seven, that's when you start to see the benefits. Yeah. Um, so you just need to be really, really persistent and resilient for the first three, four weeks. And then yeah. after that, it's just, it'll come easy to you. Yeah. Cool. You know, Sounds good. Do you want to mention that you don't really like much healthy food? Do you? So is it better just to eat less of the food you do? Like? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, another, another question would be, I, I'm not a great love of healthy food. Okay means would it be better for me try and eat less unhealthy food or not and try and start trying like healthy so foods i would it's a bit of a mix really i i would certainly try are there any foods that you just think i'm never going to get on with that food like vegetables i used to hate vegetables as a kid 
Yeah, I'm not a great laugh. <laughs> Do you like fruit? No. Yeah. Yeah. I like fruit. So you could potentially, I would definitely say, eat less of the unhealthy stuff, obviously. Um, yeah. But when it comes to some of the good stuff, let's say you eat, I don't know, let's say, for example, so you, you eat an apple a day and that's your fruit for the day or what yeah. have you. Um, instead of having that extra slice of pizza or that extra burger, have another apple. Um, yeah. And also with hydration, um, as long as you're drinking enough, water obviously fills you up. Yeah. So you feel full. You, you're not going to feel as hungry if your hydration is, is good. Um, yeah. So I would personally say definitely try to replace that extra unhealthy food with more fruit. If, you, if you're okay with fruit, definitely up the fruit. Yeah. But also um, what I was going to say is you've got like, so let's say, for example, your calorie intake is like 4,000 at the moment and three and a half thousand of that is made up of bad food yeah. um let's say you drink do you drink whole milk like the blue top milk no green green okay so green is fine have you ever tried the red yeah but you don't like it that's all right i don't mind okay. it i would so i would i would drink any of the milk yeah any so you can milk. you can there's, there's slightly less calories in the red top milk obviously so right. you could change your milk that would have a an you know an impact on your calories straight away the other thing to think about is yeah. and, and i never used to like it but i've grown to like it is things like oat milk um coconut right. milk almond milk um those kind of milks even though they are you know they taste a bit different to begin with you know they're obviously yeah. a lot healthier than the other milks yeah. and there's they're, they're more they've got more nutrients in them but also there's less fat yeah so that's the big thing um do you eat a lot of sweets and chocolate like me do i eat a lot of what? a lot of sweets and chocolates like me yeah 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 so i'm terrible yeah. i'm awful i've got such yeah. a sweet tooth um if you give me a share bag of anything i ain't sharing it it's all going in my mouth no 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 it's all going down me yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly right, yeah. so yeah. what i've done since christmas because christmas was terrible for me i just ate everything in sight so what i've done is i've just li yeah, limited myself so monday to friday i try and stay off sweets and chocolate and and stuff like that yeah and then maybe saturday i'll have a bit of a you know i'll have a bit of a pig out on on stuff because you do also need that bit of a release especially if you're going from having a really unhealthy diet and you want to be super healthy you know it's yeah. too much of a shock so you need to give yourself a little bit of a you know say, oh, i've been really good this week i'm just going to have that one chocolate bar that's absolutely fine you know there's no problem with that at all so that would be my advice is just to minimize the unhealthy stuff but don't cancel yeah. it out altogether yeah okay cool does Sounds that all good. make sense yeah it does yeah all right cool so what is the date have you set a date for that hundred pound oh uh, what have you set a date where you're going to jump on the scales and you need to be a hundred pound lighter on that date no i haven't, haven't set a date okay so set a date and we'll work yeah. towards it because that yeah, will give okay. you a genuine target to work towards because the problem is if you don't have a date you'll let yeah. yourself kind of feel oh well I haven't done it in 12 months. I'll give myself another month. It'll be okay. And all of a sudden yeah. that rolls on to another month, another six months. And yeah. then eventually you just never get there. So it's always yeah. good to set a date. And I would say, if you yeah. want to do it this year, let's just set a date for Christmas Eve this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Sounds Done. good for me. <laughs> all right, mate. Have you got any more questions? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, um okay. uh, yeah okay um the only other question was how much exercise do you do a day currently not enough um you know christmas i was lazy i took two weeks off um training over christmas and probably two and a half weeks actually off training um but when i'm training for a challenge i normally train sort of five six hours a day um yeah. and you know obviously that needs big calorie intake then so you know, I currently aim to eat roughly seven to 8,000 calories a day, um, yeah. you know, which is, as you know, a lot of food. And um, Don't it's, worry, um, that's easy. <laughs> I can do that. Easy, that's easy. the easy bit. That's but, um, the easy bit. But it's, it's feeling when, I mean, I've gone from, I'm on a different journey to you. I'm trying to put weight on. 
Um, yeah. And I'm, I went from 82 kilos um, and I weighed myself the other day and I'm now 92 kilos. So I put on 10 kilos in probably three months which has been quite hard actually believe it or not because of the training obviously it's it's yeah. really hard to put good muscle mass on especially at that that quickly so you know i was pretty happy around christmas time i was like do you know what i've done well i'm gonna relax i'm gonna have two weeks off i'm just gonna eat i'm not worry about my training too much um so now i'm hoping that to get back into a proper training regime where i'm like training at least at least four hours a day um, yeah. but like now after this, I'll go out, we'll go out and I'll put a weighted vest on and we'll go for a walk up the top of the mountain, just at, uh, around by my house. And we'll do a little bit of a body weight workout up there and then walk back, yeah. which is about five. We'll end up doing about three, three and a half miles, um, yeah. in the vest and with a workout. So that's a couple of hours, but, but yeah, normally I, you know, peak season for me, I'd, I'd normally be looking at five, six hours a day. Yeah. Cool. I think that's your big difference, isn't it? Because you yeah. just swim about nine hours a week. Yeah, you? definitely. Yeah, I think it's. Do you know what? We're in a really hard time at the moment because, you know, we 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 are still quite restricted on what we can and can't do. Yeah. So it's, <clears throat> you know, the motivation piece you talked about earlier is really tough. You know, it is hard. It's yeah. listen. It's been hard for me. Um, you know, and and I'm supposed to be motivated every day to train, and some days I don't want it. Some days I yeah. literally and. And I've also, I've let myself not train on certain days, um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, which historically looking back, I never used to do. Um, you know, I've also got aches and pains all over my body, which, you know, I'm like, oh God, I, I don't want to ache any more than I already do. But yeah. um, so, it, but it is hard to motivate yourself, mate. It mm -hmm. is, it's really hard. You're not alone there. Um, you know, it's, it's really tough some days. But that's what's important, having a good support network. So, and that's why I said, you know, if you need anything, I'm here. Um, yeah. I'm more than happy to help you on on your hundred pound journey, mate. So, in a weird way, I'm on the road to one hundred kilos, and you're you're on the road to one hundred pounds. But the other way, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and that's kind of another reason why I want to lose weight is because I'm always aching, especially yeah. on my back. Yeah, back kills every 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 yeah. sort of exercise I do. It just Achy, achy. And that, that's the thing as well, though, mate. I've, what I've noticed is I do a lot. I don't know if you've seen, but I do a lot of training in a weights vest. Yeah. And in that weights vest is 20 kilos. And, yeah. you know, I, at the moment, am not, just over 90 kilos. And I feel that weight I've put on in, the, in a short space of time, I feel a lot heavier. And yeah. I'm less agile, you know. I, I used to be able to sprint whenever I wanted in any direction. And now I'm thinking yeah. sprinting is hard work at this weight because I'm just not used to it. Yeah. And then I put a 20 kilo weights vest on and think, oh my God, my knees are going to buckle because it's a lot of weight, yeah. you know. And so the, the big is. thing is, is it's on your joints, isn't it? It's on your bones. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So it's, it's really tough. And I think, you yeah. know, if, if obviously 100 pound is a lot to lose, um, yeah. but you know, I'm hundred percent sure you'll get there. And it's, it's one of those things that it's just, you'll feel so much better for it, you know? When yeah. you, and I think that's what you've got to keep reminding yourself on this journey as well. When you have yeah. those crap days and you're thinking, I don't want to bother with this anymore. You've got to keep yeah. reminding yourself of how you're going to feel when you do get there. Cause you will feel yeah. 10 times better. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Josh. Oh no, thank you, mate.